Hello, and welcome to KDAB News, the monthly update for professionals working with Qt, C++, and 3D technologies. I'm Robert Brock, and in this edition we have insights... Hey, Robert, uh, Robert, can I just interrupt you here for a second? I have some super cool news to share with your audience, namely that September 28th to 30th, we are going to host a conference in Berlin around Qt. The name, Qt DevCon. Brilliant name, if I, if I may add. Developer conference around Qt, Qt DevCon. Yeah, you get it. The call for paper is actually out already. And uh, until June 13th, you need to make up your mind on what you want to talk about. Not you, Robert, but anybody listening here. So do send in your proposal and do sign up for the conference. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Corona, right? But by then, we hope that most people will actually have been vaccinated so we safely can meet. And of course, we'll make sure that we follow all the right regulations, all to keep everybody safe. So the last thing we want is a cute censored plague. See you around. Thank you, Jasper. Insights into C20 with Ivan Chukin, Qt 6.1 release, Tool of the Month, and event announcements. This month, we have a special interview guest to provide some deeper insights into the state of C20. Hello, Ivan. Can you tell us a bit on how the new versions of C are released? Hi, Robert. One of the things that people don't often realize is that there is not a single company behind C++ that drives its development and adoption. It's driven by a community consisted of quite a few different companies and many individuals, much like a normal free open source sort of project. And obviously everyone is welcome to join. Well, that explains why I've never heard of C++ Limited. So to follow the software analogy, how do the patches get in? When you get an idea of what you'd like to see in a future version of C++, it's customary to first see what the general C++ community thinks about it. What you'd usually do is post a detailed explanation of the desired feature to one of the public mailing lists. If it is well received, you write a proposal, send it to the C++ committee, and prepare to defend the proposal, or officially to be its champion, at the next committee meeting. Those are usually in person, but the last few ones were organized online because of the pandemic. Now, similar to a regular software patch, you will get some feedback on what should be changed, improved or removed, so that you can revise the proposal. Most proposals go through several revisions before they are accepted, if they end up being accepted at all. Now, this is a bit simplified view of the whole process, since C++ is an ISO standard, most of these steps have some additional ISO procedures that need to be followed. How the votes are done, who can vote, and so on. The community usually considers the final vote on a new C++ version to be the, so to say, the release, while it's formally release and the ISO publishes the new spec in paper form. The C++ standard, for example, was completed at the Prague meeting in February 2020 but it is officially released by ISO in December of the same year. Hmm. It's good to see that things are gone over so thoroughly before they get added. Uh, what are the most important features of C20 for you? I'd probably go with concepts first. I'm a huge fan of statically typed for programming languages, and I'd say that what static typing brings to normal programming, concepts bring to template metaprogramming. Another reason for putting the concepts first is that they are the only big C++20 feature that is completely supported by all the compilers that I work with. As for the other features, I pick ranges and coroutines as the most important ones. Uh, ranges allow us to write more functional style programs by chaining series of transformations over collections of data. And coroutines bring a new way of executing functions that is generic enough to be usable for error handling, asynchronous code execution, and much, much more. All good features indeed. And how big of a deal is C20 in general? Has it been well received by the community now it's been out for a while? It is important to note that the fact that C20 has been released doesn't mean that we can use it now. It isn't a software release. C20 is a standard. So a paper 
document specifying what compilers should do when compiling C++ code. From what I've seen so far, even with earlier versions of C++, people tend to first adopt the features that are available in most popular compilers, even if they only use a subset of those. I guess having a wide support for something hints that the feature is more stable. In the case of C++20, concepts are that feature and I've seen quite a few projects using them already, without using anything else from C++20. I'd say that C++20 brings a few revolutionary things, but I expect that many will wait adopting them until C++23 is released. One reason being that the compiler support for C++20 features will become stable enough. And the second is that C++23 will bring in some missing library bits that will make the C++20 features much more useful. Good stuff. So, onward to C++23. Thank you for your time, Ivan. Goodbye. Earlier this month, the first new version under Qt 6 was released. The largest focus of Qt 6.1 has been to bring many of the add-on modules that we supported in Qt 5.15 over to Qt 6. Those modules are Active Qt, Qt Charts, Qt Data Visualization, Qt Device Utilities, Qt Graphical Effects, Qt Lottie, Qt State Machine, and Qt Virtual Keyboard. Apart from those, there have been a variety of new features and bug fixes in the already existing modules. In Qt Core, most efforts have been in adding more convenience and simplifications to the API. Find the complete release announcement and feature list in the link below. Z-Standard, or ZSTD for short, is a fast, lossless compression algorithm targeting real-time compression scenarios at Zlib level and better compression ratios. It's backed by a very fast entropy state provided by Huff0 and FSE library. Why is it useful? It offers extremely fast compression, which is getting used in more and more places. For example, it's been used in KDAP's tools, Hotspot and HeapTrack. In HeapTrack, it's an alternative for GZIP because it compresses just as well, but is much faster both when compressing and decompressing. In Hotspot, it's used to map the similar use case in Perf. For example, Perf in this case is an upstream project which takes the data. And for some time, this can also be compressed with ZSTD. The main advantage here is that it can take large amounts of data and easily compress them down 10 to 100 times. The project is provided as an open source dual BSD and GPLv2 licensed C library and command line utility producing and decoding ZST, GZ, XZ, and LZ4 files. You'll find more about Z standard on GitHub, link below. Again, as you have already heard from Jasper in the intro, Qt DevCon will happen in Berlin end of September. The call for papers is open until the 13th of June, so Go check it out in the link below. For our German-speaking viewers, there's a great opportunity to learn more about Qt 6. On 23rd of June, Heise will host a conference dedicated to Qt 6 only in their Better Code event series, featuring a keynote by Lars Noll, speakers from Ambition, KDE, and KDAB, as well as a talk about FOSS and propriety licenses by law expert Till Jaeger. On the agenda are, among others, container classes in Qt 6, string processing, and advanced 3D with Qt. Of course, most talks will be in German. Check out the complete program below. KDE Academy 2021 will happen the 18th to the 25th of June, again online. As always, there will be trainings on the first day, talks on the second day and third day, and a broad variety of birds of a feather, meetings and workshops. On the 22nd and 23rd of June, there will also be the Qt Contributors Summit. Check out the complete agenda on the website linked below. On June 19th, there will be the Italian C++ online conference. The talks will be live and it's free to attend. So, thank you for watching, stay safe, and feel free to share any feedback or questions below the video. I'll see you next time.